day two impressions? Just what was different? What did you add? We played a lot more live okay. um, today, five on five. I think yesterday, today too, but yesterday we were really trying to set the foundation for how we wanted to play on both ends. And today, especially towards the end, we just let him go. Um, I think that's important for us to just watch and see what we have, um, how guys play, how guys play together. Um, but I thought it was a good day. Um, probably a little more mistakes than yesterday, which is expected and what we want. And so many of them probably haven't, they've talked about they haven't played fives in quite some time. So that's very beneficial for them. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's been good. And, you know, they kept asking me the whole practice. Are we, we going to play fives? Are we going to play fives? <laughs> you know, yeah, practice. Yes, guys, we're going to play fives. Um, so we'll continue to do that. We're going to practice again tonight and it'll be light. And then tomorrow we're going to have a scrimmage and uh, really see how we look with different teams. Is tonight the only two today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now that you guys are playing fives, what are your secondary impressions of Benedict now that you've actually kind of seen him? Yeah. Even even more impressed than I was yesterday. Um, yesterday wasn't as conducive to being yourself and playing in a free and flowing environment. Today we just let him play, um, obviously within the framework of what we do. And man, he can put the ball on the ground. He's so strong. He's so powerful in everything he does. Um, he can get us shot off at any time. Um, and that's just going to translate really well to when the season starts. What have you seen from Dwayne as far as growth, leadership going into year two? Obviously, he's focused and he's, he's basically saying determined to make this his best year. Yeah, no, he's, he's super focused. Um, he's really locked in on everything that we're doing. He's asking a lot of questions. Uh, the thing that I like, I mean, you guys know Dwayne. Dwayne likes to talk. Dwayne is uh, <laughs> he's the best vibe in the gym and every gym he's in. Um, but what he's really doing is he's helping the guys that he's on the team with and the young guys really understand the different spots. He does such a good job talking and helping other guys, that guys know the spots that they need to be in, or they know how a drill should run, because Dwayne can just talk the whole thing out. Is he the best communicator among this bunch? He might be one of the best communicators I've ever been around. Just, you know, his talk is not just frivolous talk, he's talking about things that matter. And, uh, and that's what communication is about. How much do you think his background, kind of how he got to where he is, will help other guys, you know, like the Tevin Browns and others who are trying to, you know, Vibe for their spot in the league. That's it. You know, we talked about that the other day. We use uh, TT as the example, but Dwayne is in the same, you know, same boat. Like TT didn't even play the first two games of summer league last year, and now he's on an NBA roster. Um, and Dwayne's the same way. Um, he played in the games, but you know, between the G League and a two way, and then he finally made it. Like we have great examples for the guys that are in similar positions as those guys were last year to follow, um, and they're doing a good job helping those guys understand what that's like. As a coach, how helpful is it to have such a great communicator running the drills and on the floor? Is there almost kind of a sense of like, kind of just taking a step back sometimes? Yeah, there is. I can just be quiet and observe and, and uh, you know, not have to be talking and figuring everything out, but just watching our guys, watch what we're doing, watch what we're doing well, because a guy like Dwayne and, and some of our other guys, Isaiah is doing a great job of communicating as well. They just communicated out and they figured it out together. Speaking of Isaiah, what kind of growth have you seen from him so far as he heads into his second year? He has been an absolute beast these first two days, uh, especially on the offensive glass. He just looks like he's more aware. He understands his spots. Um, and the other thing um, that was really good today, we worked on some different pick and roll stuff. His communication, as I said earlier, his communication has just been phenomenal. Um, things are happening quickly. Um, he's used to that. Obviously, going, going through that in the season last year, that happened it quickly, and he's been able to perceive it, translate it, and say it to the guys, help our guys better than I thought he would at this point. I know we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but just kind of the second year guys having to step into leadership roles now that they're on the court playing fives, how have you seen them kind of naturally gravitate into being vocal leaders or leaders by example? Yeah, a lot of them are playing on the same team. And, you know, I think I, I spoke to them about this today. Um, how important it is that they find how they can gel together uh, within all of their roles. And it's a difficult thing to do. Uh, a couple of the guys are coming back off their second year playing the NBA. They've been working on their game. They want to play their game. You know, they want to work on the stuff that they've been working. They want to do the stuff they've been working on. Uh, but the important thing is how we can do it together. And so a big, you know, a shift up and a step up in leadership and their roles is how they can fuse that and fuse what they've been working on to help the whole team. And I think they're going to do a good job of it. We're going to keep pushing them. You know, I'm kind of taking a step back and, hey, you guys, it's a problem. You guys got to figure out the problem together. Is there a part of you that's like, Isaiah's still only 20? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I say it all the time. TJ McConnell and I have a joke. Let's not normalize the, thing that I, the things that Isaiah does. He does things that are not normal. And once you see him all the time, you start to think, Oh, that's normal. And it's we have to remember that what he does is not normal. Um, he is 
a special human being. He's a special athlete. He's a special player. And to be 20 years old doing what he's doing is is really impressive. Will you play him entirely at the five, or might he get some opportunity at the four, too? We haven't. Have you thought about that? Yeah, we thought about it a little bit, uh, definitely starting at the five. Um, but I think there's a place for him to play some four, um, offensively and defensively, just to be in different coverages defensively, to be in a different role offensively, you know, learn a different position. You know, like I said earlier, one of the things that we're trying to do is make the practices in these situations harder than the games will be next year. Um, and so as much as we can get their minds going, the better. And I think that's a thing that we can do for Isaiah. You've been involved in a lot of summer leagues and just on paper, this seems like a pretty good roster for a Vegas setting. How do you feel about the talent level of your group through two days? I feel that I do not want to screw them up. <laughs> that's what that's what we coaches do a good job of is messing up the talent. Um, but I'm excited about it. I mean, talent wins games at the end of the day in the NBA. And so uh, I'm excited about the talent. And I think they're excited about the talent that's in the gym and playing for each other. Um, so we feel really encouraged going into summer league. But as we said, at the end of the day, it's about playing together and doing the right things.